all of a sudden it turns into kind of a game console and you can navigate the site and um, I can also connect this iPod Touch as well as my phone and then it's also going to be able to participate. So we'll play this first game here. This is called Monkey Golf. It's kind of a Wii style golf game and uh, you know the beauty of this is you can actually uh, you don't have to um, use a mouse or keyboard to interface with this video game console at all. And um, you can see here that this, so I can use the little rotator uh, thing here. Hopefully you guys can see that on the video. And then um, I can use the swing button here. And then uh, just like a Wii, you know, you, wow, what a bank shot there. <laughs> And then, so, you know, this would be the next player coming up, and they could do the same thing. So, there you go. maybe this is another hole in one. And nice, I am a pro. Um, so, this is a kind of a fun game. This is one of the ones that we built ourselves. So, if I quit the game, this will pull us back into the main console. Um, and we're able to select and play other games. So I'll show you a quick racing game. I need a volunteer. One of you guys want to race a boat with me? Mark Hopkins is our gamer in the house I'm a here. Gamer. <laughs> I'm a gamer. Nice. All right, Mark. There you go. Right. Once this loads up, it should push the controls down for you. Okay. And that one doesn't have uh, ads disabled, so you have to skip the oh, ad. Okay. All right. And then, so now you have it accelerate on this top right area. This is reverse. You have dive, which you'll need later in the race, and then uh, the other thing, actually, oh my god, you're already taking off after. Oh. And so this is using an accelerometer to kind of steer the boat. I got so it. So we're kind of head-to-head. -head. cool thing about this game is if you connect with our um, early version of the Android, uh, it'll actually make your boat an Android device, which is as ah. opposed to the Apple. So oh. that's where the Rival Racers name came from. Uh, that you can go head to head with somebody else uh, in a different form. Found a cliff. Yes, you did. <laughs> so if I pick up the speed boost, I should be able to gun it now. Uh -oh. All right. So that's basically it. Um, these are two of the games that we built. Like I said, we have third party developers working with this. and. Well, we can go into the whole business model and the, uh, the kind of uh, developer SDKs that we have for everybody. So. Oh. <laughs> That's really right. too well. So if we quit this game, uh -huh. this pulls us back out and we can try and play other games. Now this, uh, this game here, Gnop Gnop, actually is a paid game. This is uh, one of the new ones we're doing. Um, when this loads up, it will actually prompt you to uh, spend some coins and uh, probably can't see all the details of that but if I want to play this game I need to actually pay per session it's a little blurry oh, there we go and it's I can actually pay and then it'll let me get into the game and start playing this and this is kind of a retro uh, pong game that's uh, they kind of have your Oh, I'm kind of sucking at it while trying to show this uh, through the camera, too, but you guys get the idea. So there you go. That's Brass Monkey. You can find the app at, at playbrassmonkey.com, and that's also the video game console. So, yeah, thanks. Very cool. Okay. Brass Monkey. Playbrassmonkey.com as the URL. Uh, Chris, so great demo. Um, thanks. So... Obviously, smartphones. Everyone's get everyone's getting them, right? So, so the, that market's exploding. Uh, take us through the uh, the company. What's going on? The status of the company. What uh, you're the founder. Where are you now? What's right. this, what's the current status of the company? Well, well the company essentially started out of a, a video game we were doing for Lucasfilm called the Star Wars Trench Run. Uh, and my former company, Infrared Five, was contracted to do that. Uh, and so we really hated the uh, controls on the on the browser version of the game, but we really liked them in the iPhone version of the game. And so it kind of came to us one night, we were just like, why don't we actually just turn the phone into the game controller for the browser-based game? So we figured out how to make that happen, and 
uh, it was so compelling that we decided to make a whole other company out of this. And so that's how it started. It's about a couple of years ago now. Uh, most recently, we just closed our seed round. We had seven hundred fifty thousand dollars from some great investors, angel investors, and uh, Boston-based. Uh, no, actually, all over the world. We kind of uh, did our raise uh, a lot of it through AngelList. Um, nice. So, uh, AngelList success, another success it, story. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, we have a guy all the way from uh, one investor in France, another in Israel, another one in New York, and. Uh, uh, and, and then the rest are mostly in Boston, but yeah. So. Talk about the process of the angel list. How did that go down? I mean, great success story, angel list. Naval's going to be here tomorrow. I'll try to get him on the, on the cube. Yep. Uh, Nivy, um, MIT guy, Nivy. You know, great guys. We love them at angel list. And they're really disrupting the fundraising process. Do you think you would have raised that much money without angel list? Uh, not in Boston. I think we would have had to come out to Silicon Valley or somewhere else where gaming is more the, the norm in terms of uh, kind of funding that type of stuff. How did you get the traction on AngelList? Did you have an advisor who kind of endorsed you in or was there an initial just you put it up there? Yeah. Um, I think one of our first uh, followers was like Jason Kalkanis or something like that. And then I think that spurred it on and other people heard about it. Uh, did he put money in? No, he Jason? didn't actually. No. But uh Hey, you know, sometimes all it takes is like one little thing like <laughs> one that. Spark, suggesting. A little attention, yeah, you know. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it just kind of ballooned from there. Everybody started thinking this is pretty cool, which, it as is. you see from the video, you know, the, the demo I just showed you, it's uh, pretty compelling. Um, I, I think people are seeing that, you know, smartphones are becoming the norm. I don't think we're going to be calling phones smart in the future, they're just yeah. going to be phones. And, um, uh, browser technology in terms of games as well has really uh, gone leaps and bounds uh, yeah. to what it could do before. So now we really have the ability to make a, a true video game console just using the stuff that people already have. So you guys have a lot of options then at this point. You can go end-to-end -end on yep. the game side. You've done some gaming. Yep. You could also um, leverage other people, developers who are developing games, yep. and leverage that. So you. You don't have to make those decisions right now. Right now, you, you built those games, right? Uh, yeah, right. except for the Pong game that I showed you there. That was a third-party developer. Um, a couple of the other ones on there are also third-party. Uh, but, yeah, we do provide a free SDK uh, for developers to use. Uh, we have an HTML5 one, you know, JavaScript So you're based. not locked into a specific path as the market changes or Absolutely. grows. You could say, okay, hey, maybe we'll just own the controller edge or console's better yeah. action for us. So you don't have to make those now. You can do your own games. Right, right? right now we're thinking of it as really a platform play um, and very much like I always compare it to Nintendo, right? They made a video game console like the Nintendo NES, for example, uh, and then made some games for it, Super Mario Brothers being like one of the most famous and uh, successful games that they did themselves. So I don't think that it has to be an either or. We can make some of the games ourselves mm -hmm. and then also make it available for everybody else to make games. What's your key milestone right now as a startup? Obviously $750,000 is a good seed round. It's yep. not a lot of money. I mean, you gotta be lean and you gotta, you know, we talked about that earlier about, you know, watching your, your pennies and making sure you guys spend properly, but right. it's not a lot of capital to be in, in the gaming business. So what's your key milestones for leveraging that money? Obviously generate revenue, either sell more equity or um, right. so raise money. Yep, we're gonna, um, key thing for us right now is to get more players and, and also games or content on the platform. Um, so we only, we released the app, first version of the app in November um, and our you know initial version of the site. And uh, the, the idea with that was just to kind of get some user feedback, not do any kind of uh, media blitz at all because we really didn't want <laughs> people to find out that this thing kind of is not working quite right or it's a little kludgy. So, we kept it to under a thousand users at that point, and then uh, more more recently, just at the CES, we were showing with Verizon and stuff, and we launched a new version of the app, and then it's a, like a lot more polished, and a lot of the kind of kinks came out of it. But um, you're expecting to generate some revenue then as part of the current uh, absolutely so, of games. So we have uh, coin bundles that we sell uh, in app that you can actually use to play some of the games that are on there, and we haven't launched that many non-free games yet. They're, most of them are free right now, so. Yeah. Uh, really, right now, we want just people to experience it, uh, get into it, and then uh, we're going to start adding more. Yeah, develop on it and also play it. You know, so. All right, uh, Chris Allen, CEO of Brass Monkey. Thanks for coming inside the cube. Appreciate right. the demo. Great thanks, demo. Sean.